Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's a uh, productive meeting. You know, anytime you're spending time talking about uh, items that are of significance to the state of Minnesota, not just to uh, individual caucuses, it's a good thing. Uh, talking about tax relief for small business owners, uh, looking at some of these uh, from a global perspective that will not only keep Minnesota, you know, on the on the front end of this recovery, but help us uh, you do even more. You know, some of the upfront ex equipment exemptions, uh, small uh, business tax relief. You know, a lot of these things are. We've each had a different veterans uh, deal where we've uh, had you know provisions in there. So if all three of us have a version of it, you know, depending on what one comes out, at least we know we, all three of us have it. So I think it was a very productive meeting, uh, a good uh, kind of tee up for these uh, the remainder of the session, and uh, we'll start again in earnest on Monday. Dave. Yeah, and I would agree with the speaker. Uh, a, a good meeting, uh, I think, productive in terms of conversation. Uh, obviously, our uh, our great interest is uh, putting together a tax bill that uh, is going to be acceptable to him, and uh, we talked uh, in great lengths about that and, and how to do it. If we could do it, uh, I think in that sense, it uh, there was uh, no standoffishness or anything like that. I think there's a degree of positivity here that uh, I think is encouraging and allows us to go forward into the next week. Was the focus on taxes? Uh, yeah, for the great part. Certainly talk a little bit about bonding. Uh, linked them up a little bit, but uh, uh, taxes and bonding and other miscellaneous items, but I think the central focus was on those two items. Will there be a bonding bill uh, this year? Well, in my opinion, there, there already is, and uh, <laughs> there will be probably one going forward. Uh, you know, we're going to have to see if, uh, you know, how it goes. It's going to have to be certainly negotiated, and in fact, even perhaps with the governor. But uh, that's part of this process. Number of chambers of commerce in the Southwest Corridor Line uh, say it's time to build it. Uh, will that be in the bonding bill? Well, it's not in at the present time, and uh, it's it's perhaps a little problematic, at least in the Senate side. It's uh, not recommended by our Senate Transportation Committee at this point. So. Uh, and uh, I don't think, if, if that is the case, it's going to be difficult for that to make. Is it not a good idea? It's, uh, it's uh, I don't think we're ready for it. I, I, think it, I think it needs to incubate a little bit more, frankly. I, I would say, you know, from a, from an, uh, a bus standpoint, you know, some of the opt-out lines, and I'm very biased because Maple Groves is one of the best, but the Eden Prairie, the Southwest line, that bus uh, opt-out is doing a, a fantastic job. We, we built a gigantic facility right off of 494 and County Road 5 there that is state-of-the-art. It's got you know some business development in there, some coffee shops and restaurants. Uh, you know We've got something that's working really well. I, I think that a, a better use of those dollars would be to expand 494 to three lanes. You know, finish 169, that <laughs> is almost done, but you know, fixing up and maintaining what we have before we add another burden onto the taxpayer, whether it be local, whether it be statewide, whether it be regional, I think that's where most Minnesotans are. You know, you fix the roof, you make sure that the, the siding is in good shape before you add on a new addition or before you add on a new garage. And I think that's one of a, a, a list of things that would be nice to have, but we're in the business right now, what we need to have, and there's a lot of need out there in the state of Minnesota that are, are, are need to be repaired and fixed up, not necessarily added on to that burden. Did internet sales taxes come up in the tax discussion? I don't think, no, not, it was mentioned, but not, 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 in, not to the point of discussion. And you hope that in the House, big bipartisan coalition yesterday on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it has to yeah. be, if you look at it from a standpoint, I think it has to be, you know, tied to the sales tax. You know, if there is uh, any generated dollars, whether, you know, there's, and that's the big, you know, the negotiation here or the big contention is that are there any dollars that actually can be accumulated? If they are, then, you know, I know $3 million probably doesn't do much to the sales tax, but if it's about business competitiveness with the internet versus brick and mortar here in the state, then it should go to reduce the sales tax. Then it's revenue neutral and, it, you know, you can get out of that discussion, so. Peter Sengem, in the vein of need to have, besides the bonding bill, what are some of the must-haves out of the, in the Senate column this year? No, I think we're to the point of this session uh, where it really boils down to a good tax bill. I mean, obviously there's going to be other things presented on the floor, uh, game and fish and things like this here, but uh, we're at the point of the session where what really matters is a good tax bill and uh, working with the governor to get one. On the tax bill, has have you guys agreed on anything or has anything been tossed overboard saying, you know, we're not going to agree on this this year, so let's just drop it? 
I don't I think th we disagreed on anything, did we, Kurt? I think, a, well, I don't think we're going to do a tax increase. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't come up for a while, but that's, yeah, right. you, know, you know. The governor's raised concerns about this property tax cuts, sure. those types of things. Has he ruled those out? Or no, I don't think we've, nothing has been, you know, set aside yet. I think, no. you know, the, the Senate bill, the House bill, uh, we see as a nice, uh, a lovely buffet, and the governor can come and choose, pick and choose. There's some things that we actually, you know, are, are pitching a little harder, but, you know, there's a lot of options available there, uh, and I think that's at a point where we look at all the options and he looks at all the options that uh, we have on the table and, and then we can get to that point. But I don't think anything was set aside, you know, this is absolutely, you know, not going to happen. You said the tax bill is a must-have. Is, is bonding a must not a must-have? Well, it's certainly in there, uh, you know, but I think as we think about the must, it's, it's a good tax bill. I think we want to get a good tax bill going forward. Uh, certainly, as the speaker has pointed out, the, the whole issue of, uh, of growing our economy and prosperity is dependent on, I think, a, a good tax bill, and it certainly will complement that. And so we want to do that. Bonding bill is certainly in the mix. Uh, we're probably going to have a bonding bill at some level. We don't know, but again, all this is negotiated and uh, negotiable at this point. So we're, you know, we're in the start of the process. Can you get it done in two weeks? Oh, sure. That's that's doable. <laughs> For the folks at home, the only thing they think about when they think good tax bill is their tax return coming up. Can you explain some of the components that you think are part of a, of a tax package out of here? And, and well, the two major ones are the, you know dealing at least in our bill with the marriage penalty and the statewide business property tax. I mean, if we could get those two, I think it'd be huge. And our you know so what we've offered yeah. the, the house tax bill is. Uh, uh, the upfront equipment exemption, which once you bring that back up front, it's a one-time uh, expenditure. So once it's moved back up front, now it's about six to seven months in a wait. Um, our version of the, the tax bill has a little bit more focus on property tax owner or small business property taxes. You know, theirs is more of a statewide, which if at the end of the day, you know, a Minnesota business owner has a, a little bit less of a tax burden. It's a good thing. Um, we also have in there an R&D and an angel investment tax credit. So these are things, again, and the angel investment tax credit that we all, you know, passed and were, were very uh, proud of bipartisanly, that actually worked, and, you know, we've used a lot of those up. So, uh, and then the house tax plan also has a net operating loss, which is, you know, something, again, we we have seen in, in some cases now the early reports from New Jersey are anywhere from 30 to 66 percent growth in the in the medical device industry. Uh, it's a pretty cheap date at 18 million dollars, and if it can then, in turn, uh, stimulate what uh, some of the Obamacare uh, provisions have, you know, in some ways deterred some of our, our big manufacturers, whether Medtronic or St. Jude's. You know, there's a there's a lot of development there that could come back, and we'd like it to be in Minnesota. When are you going to be done? What does it feel like? <laughs> 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 I think we're we're in the uh, we've moved past yeah. glacial and we're in NASCAR. Yeah. You know, this is, and I think we'll, the one thing we will know is in the next few weeks, you know, next few days, how how quickly we can be done. You know, if we get to that point where, you know, this is what we we can accomplish together, and you know what we won't accomplish, we won't accomplish. It's fine. You know, yeah. but we are we're not going to dilly dally and you know mess around if we're the next you know six eight weeks or we're not going to go into may waiting for something to happen we'll get done what we can get done and agree on what we'll agree on and then you know we'll be done i, I think the 30th deadline is still very uh, very doable uh and i will yeah. compliment senator com comment on senator senjum side of it but i think that's something you know we set as a goal because i think we'll know whether or not it's a a long or short short run left and i would i would i would say effectually the same that uh, we had a good positive meeting today uh, if we continue to have good positive meetings, why, you know, we'll continue to work. If, uh, if we dead end, why, you know, it could come to, you know, come to a closure much faster. So, in terms of when, I don't know, but certainly uh, we're going to we're going to probably adjourn in April. And and you are you're fine with going home without getting some of these big things. You'd like to get them, but you would be okay with going home and not having all of them. So, so well, I, think session get, that I, I think we can get them by the end of the month. Uh, you know, again, we, we need a good relationship with the governor. We need his help in some cases to, to get some of these things. So if, if again, uh, the cordiality and I think the uh, discussion that we had today continues, why there's a good positive, uh, there are positive reasons why we can accomplish, or to the fact that we can accomplish some of these things. Uh, uh, so I think today was positive and we just ought to build on it. Stadium vote on the Senate floor? We're working on it. How about the House floor? 
Well, it'll be in uh, another committee again next, or another two committees possibly next week. So uh, I think as it goes through committees, you get a better idea how, how far it'll progress. Two committees in one week is, uh, is, is good progress. Uh, Senator, on the Viking Stadium bill, is it going to get a hearing this week? In well, it's in local government yet. We need to get it out and uh, from there probably to taxes. So do you know whether there's a hearing? That's the goal, to get it out of local government next week. The, this, this coming week? Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. Will you take any extraordinary steps to try to bypass that committee if it doesn't look like it is going to move there? Will you no, I don't, I don't know procedural if we have any. Uh, no, probably not. I, I don't think within our rules um, that we really have any options like that. To, to, uh, we'd have to pull it from local government and move it on, but uh, I think I don't think that's going to be necessary. But you do have the procedure on the floor of pulling it out and sending it to another committee, don't you? Yeah, we can re-refer through the uh, to the rules committee, sure. But you're not inclined to do that. Not not right. Now. I don't I don't feel that urgency. I think we can get it done. On the issue in general, or just on? No, in terms of moving the bill out of you know through through an audit committee. But the, the urgency comment, I guess, uh, you don't feel any urgency to do it this oh, year? Uh, to, no, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, starting to procedurally move the bill uh, out, of, out of committee, away from the local government committee. I don't, I don't feel an urgency to do that right now. I'm not sure that I can. <laughs> All right. Okay. No, thanks, thank you. So I guess, Governor, the, they're saying that this meeting is productive. Did anything get done that folks can say, okay, Session's going to end gloriously here. Well, I, I think it was a step forward in that we had a very cordial and constructive meeting, and we didn't make any final decisions. Obviously, when they adjourned, it's their decision, not mine. So, uh, you know, I think we outlined the parameters. I, you know, stressed that the tax bill is very important to them, and we talked some about the bonding. We talked a little bit about the stadium and a little bit about the capital restoration. So. We covered on, on some of the key areas that still remain to be resolved before it's over. So the tax bill is important to them. What's important to you? Well, I said I, I like cutting taxes as much as any of them do. The question is, you know, where does the money come from? I you know, pointed out again that the House tax bill would close the corporate loophole for uh, out of the, the country operations for out of state corporations. I can't imagine why that wouldn't be something that they could agree to, to raise and trade that off for uh, business uh, property tax relief in Minnesota or you know, elimination of the marriage penalty, whatever. And same thing with the affiliate nexus. So, I mean, you know, if there's a little flexibility on their part in terms of what they're willing to do to, to raise some revenues, close some loopholes, then I think, you know, we'd have something to work with. And I you know, certainly agree with them about the desire to increase the research and development to credit. And the, angel investor tax credit and there are things that are directly connected to job creation that I think are very uh, constructive as, as I say we got to pay for them. Did you come to a consensus on the bonding bill whether or not there will be one uh, and what's in it? Well no I, I you know a, a, uh, we didn't really get into the specifics I said you know <clears throat> I mean, I'm obviously in favor of the bonding want, bill yeah. I'm proposing well there's, I mean, uh, uh, something I think is good for the people of Minnesota is putting unemployed Minnesotans back to work. So I, I want it in the sense that I think it's right for Minnesota, but they're only accountable for whether a bonding bill passes or not. And if they want to try to pass one, I told them I'm very happy to call DFL legislators or Republican legislators and do whatever I can. Same thing with the stadium. I, I'll do whatever I can to be helpful, but they, I need to know from them, are they going to take the, the leadership necessary to, with, especially with their majority caucuses, to get something that we want to get through? Both of the leaders indicated this morning that if there is a bonding bill, Southwest Light Rail Corridor will not be in it. Uh, your reaction to that? I mean, I, we didn't discuss any in particular projects at, at all, but I, I've always known that one with the, some of the, the leadership, uh, both the House and the Senate opposed to it, uh, would be a difficult one to pass, but again, we didn't get into any, into any of the details. I think we have time for one more question before this group. Oh my goodness! Can we get to see it? Yeah. Did you guys talk? They, they've seemed inclined to want to link a lot of these things. Some of their the proposals that you want, some of the things they want. You know, the, the teacher stuff. Did you make clear to them that there won't be any? None of the education uh, issues came up at all, and you know, they just emphasized again their priority for the tax uh, bill. Uh, before you know anything else could be agreed to, and 
So I'll you know, get back to them next beginning next week and we'll see what's possible. Did they give you a commitment at all in the Viking Stadium or anything? No commitment. I, you know, I just, again, we've got two key hearings in the House uh, next Monday night and then taxes, I guess, Tuesday. And so, you know, uh, the, you know, I'll say the proof will be in the pudding, you know. I mean, you say regardless of what anybody says at this point, the real question is going to be, does it have the votes to get through these committees and onto the floor? I hope it does. And I'm told them again, I'll do whatever I can with individual legislators or whatever in order to try to you know, get that through. Because again, it's thousands of jobs for Minnesotans. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you,